Welcome to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast. We're joined by Serena Linton from Arizona Gymnastics. Serena, thanks for joining us today and happy to have a conversation with you about all things gym cats. No problem. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. So one of the fixtures for you in your life as a gym cat is on the bars and on the beam, your two events. What does it mean to you to have those two events and what interests you or what challenges you the most about being on those two events? Well, I mean, bars specifically, I wasn't recruited for bars. I actually re- was recruited here for vault and beam. And I have not yet stepped foot in the comp- competitive realm on vault. But I think that when I came in as a freshman, I really felt like I needed to prove myself, as many gymnasts do when you, when you come in. And, you know, I just took a chance and I said, I want to do bars. I put on my grips and our coach at the time, David, was like, okay, you can try. We'll see what happens. And... Mid-season, um, after, you know, some sickness and stuff that I dealt with, um, I got thrown in mid-me UCLA, and that was the scariest time, but <laughs> I actually did my debut on bars, which I didn't think I would do, and after that, it kind of just launched me into being in lineup from then on out on bars, and on beam, you know, that was like a solid event that I had been training, and I fully expected to be in, and once I got in, made my debut 9875, so I mean... It's, it's the event I love. It was all history from there. Yeah. <laughs> got thrown into the fire right away on, yeah. on bars, uh, which is an interesting story that you came in to think, focusing on vault, but hey, life happens sometimes and, and that's the way it goes. Yeah. For, in particular, bars and beam, what makes them so difficult as a gymnast? Well, bars is completely upper body strength. I mean, you use your shoulders, you use your wrists, you have to be super focused on your grip strength and just nailing every handstand. It, I think that in comparison to the other three events, it's a lot of legs. I mean, balance beam, for example, though, is a lot of focus on your agility and you have to be super mindful of everything you're doing. And it's can't let any, I mean, on any event, you can't let any distraction in, but I think beam primarily is like, if you're off, you're off. So I think with those two events, you know, it takes different strength, but at the end of the day, gymnastics is a mental game. You have to be on. <laughs> and, and in regards to beam, one of your events, assistant coach Taylor Spears, a beam expert, as it were, the 2014 national champion on the beam. What has your relationship with her been like and how has she pushed you to be better on beam? I mean, coming in, Taylor has always been an idol to me. So to be able to be coached by her is amazing to watch older teens. I mean, the national champion, I don't think it gets any better than that. So to have her as a leader and to hear her corrections, hear what she has to say about my routine and her putting her full trust in me is not like I couldn't ask for anything more. So being able to train with her every day is amazing. And I just want to follow in her footsteps and maybe one day I can be just like her. Now you competing for Coach Court. John Court's been a fixture in Arizona Gymnastics for a long time as an assistant and now as the leader of the program. How has he impacted you as a gymnast at Arizona? Well, I mean, before college, I actually had two major knee surgeries. And that was really interesting because I actually didn't know if I would even do college gymnastics. And John Court, when I gave him a call saying, hey, I want to be at Arizona regardless. I'm on a full ride academic scholarship and I still want to do this sport. And he was kind of like, oh, we'll see if we have a spot left for you. And I had moved into the dorms. And last minute, right before school started, uh, he texted me and was like, hey, come meet in the offices. The coaches want to talk to you. And then in there, literally the day before school started, I got offered a spot on the team. And from then on, it was kind of like a game of, okay, I need to prove myself. Like I talked about, prove myself, prove myself on the events, my strengths, you know. And for him to even give me the opportunity and letting me walk on this team and show what I can do. I've always been grateful for that because gymnastics is the love of my life. And I didn't, I wasn't ready to let it go. What does it say about you and your resiliency to go from maybe being thrown on the team last minute to thrown on the bars (laughs) last minute? It's been a, uh, adapt an adaptation of change for you as a college athlete. What does that say about you, about your resiliency? Well, I mean, I trained as an elite athlete all my life until up until like probably the last year um, going through this process of healing from my knee surgeries. I felt like I always had to be ready for the unexpected. And I think as a gymnast, especially in the lineups, you always have to be prepared for being thrown in last minute. And I think as a freshman, all I wanted to do was just compete. I didn't care if I was 
um, first, last, in the middle. I didn't even care if I was in exhibition. I just wanted to go out there and show what I could do. And as soon as that opportunity got thrown at me, I, yeah, I was scared. I was like, oh my god, here it is. But when I finally got the chance to prove myself and just have fun with it, everything from there, just it moved forward. And I think that the coaches definitely developed a lot of trust in my ability to get get everything done that I needed to. And you touched on it a little bit before, kind of your pre-Arizona experience, knee injuries. How did Serena, the youth gymnast, get into gymnastics growing up in the Phoenix area? Well, honestly, my parents didn't really do sports that much. I mean, they in, in elementary school, high school, you know, they oh, like wrestling here, swim here. But I think that I just was a monkey. I was rolling around. I had so much energy, and they said, we need to do something with this. So... <laughs> Went in at around three years old and just ran with it, fell in love with it. It was my outlet when things weren't the best outside of the gym. And I think that I just fell in love with everything that it gave me. And, and that overcoming the knee injuries and overcoming the adversity of being thrown on the team and thrown on a, a particular event that you weren't prepared for. But you have done well right away from the get-go. You mentioned the, the first score on bars. Uh, from your freshman year in 2020, you give give me your favorite or maybe your best routine or a performance you've done on each of your events. Do you remember maybe where you were, what it was? Well, I would say that last year, um, my favorite memory was Pac 12s. I, you know, I had kind of a rocky season with COVID and everything like that, but finding my confidence and going out there, I had not competed to Pac 12 because COVID shut down my freshman year. And to be a, to be able to be on podium and everything's just televised, I hit it and I got a 9-9. And that was probably one of the best feelings. Um, did the same thing at regionals, 9-8-7-5, nailed it again. So um, those two were definitely my highlights, along with my debut where I, I scored a 9-8-7-5 my freshman year. Um, and I think for my bar team, the UCLA one that I talked about getting thrown in, it may have not been my best score that I've achieved since then but it was definitely just the moment of being able to just have my first routine ever as a college gymnast was something really special for me what is the feeling or what is going through your head when you just said as you said here you know pac championships 2021 beam i nailed it 99 what what goes through your mind the minute that last heel hits the ground and you, you know you're you're done with that event excitement i mean all my hard work paying off we had such a long season, such a long preseason, and it just felt like everything, all the puzzle pieces went together, and it was meant to happen. And I think that for a lot of gymnasts, that stuck landing at the end is just like a cherry on top. Now, uh, a friend of yours, a, a fellow competitor of yours, a fellow uh, Arizona, Michaela Skinner uh, of Utah Gymnastics fame and also of the Olympics, what has your relationship been with her like, and, and what about her makes you strive to be better yeah so like I said growing up as an elite gymnast I was around a lot of other really advanced and obviously um successful gymnasts and Michaela along with a lot of other girls on the national team a lot of um current NCAA gymnasts Suni Lee Jade Carey um I trained with them at national team camp as a as a young girl and you know, to be able to be side by side with Michaela in my like high school years has been crazy because seeing the amount of difficulty and the amount of confidence and just drive that she had every single day in the gym was really inspiring because when I was down with my injuries, it was kind of like, who do I look for for motivation? And she was somebody who, no matter what was happening, you know, no matter if her body hurt, if she had been in the gym already five hours, she was still going and kicking her teens. So I think that was a big motivation to just be like, if she can do it, you know, I can do it. So she's definitely been a great role model for me. And Serena, talk, talking about role models, and I think your experience here um, with Arizona Gymnastics, so much you've done on the beam, on the bar, but also you do a lot outside of the mat, mats, outside of the matches, outside of gymnastics, outside of the court. Uh, whether it's various uh, issues that you are a champion for, that you're involved with, I want to touch on, but I want to make sure I touch on them all because there, there, there are a lot of them. Um, Gymnast for Peace Action and Change representative. Uh, you helped create this GPAC in 2021. Uh, your inspiration behind that, your, your thoughts of it going so far. Yeah, so I think when, you know, the world was 
rumbling with a lot of different issues. John and I had spoken about what the importance is of having diversity and inclusion, not only just in our team, but in this entire sport. Gymnastics is a very predominantly white sport, and to highlight and showcase those who have diversity um, is really important to make everybody feel included. And I think that when we created this, we wanted to have a safe space for us athletes who are um, individualized in that way to be able to, you know, make things better for us when, for some reason, or when, I guess, things aren't going well in that area. I mean, I think there's always room for improvement and it can be a touchy topic, but um, for, you know, people to feel fully welcome. Absolutely. Uh, a virtual internship with Anat Health based in Barcelona, Spain. Inspiration, and, and what did you take away from that experience? Yeah, so working and going international has always been a dream of mine. Um, I was presented with this opportunity to be an intern, and I was lucky enough to be majoring in the nutritional sciences and also be fighting for diversity and inclusion, women's empowerment, and I think that this was a great combination of both. I mean, I worked in the nu nutrition department with creating social media posts and creating um, like educational pieces on the nutrition with um, women for different, you know, um, like, <laughs> sorry, it, different things for women that, you know, men don't face. <laughs> it's really simple. Yep. I mean, men don't get periods. So, yeah. Different nutrition. <laughs> yeah, different, different nutritional folks. things. Yeah. Uh, and then you also had a study abroad experience in yeah. Italy. Yes, I did. And what was that like? That was amazing. I was given, I was, it was actually fully covered. So I worked really hard to get a bunch of different scholarships for that. I got, um, one of the study abroad scholarships that the U of A offers. I applied for a Gilman International Scholarship as well as a Fund for Educational Abroad Scholarship that most of them were, besides the uh, study abroad one through the U of A, were focused for um, diverse students who may have not really been presented with an opportunity like this. So mm -hmm. um, I was really lucky to have that fully covered and to be able to go and study nutrition in Italy during the summer. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Better than that. <laughs> and then you were also a panelist and speaker for the Pac-12 Team Green for Amplifying Voices for Change, another uh issue that's near and dear to your heart, and, and you spoke about uh, at length about some of the issues you see in this area. What what inspired you to get involved with this program or this, this campaign, as it were? Yeah, so I was asked to do this panel to speak about um, the GPAC, to speak about the different things that we do for diverse, diversity inclusion on our team. And I thought this was a great panel to highlight different student athletes and our drive and our action to use our voice to promote and educate people. So I think that was really special. It was me and another student athlete from Oregon, as well as two coaches, one from Stanford. And um, John originally was going to do it, but he was like, hey, I think it would be great for you to kind of step wow. in and take over for me. And I think that was really special because he didn't have to do that. And to give me that that spotlight to be able to voice what I want to share as a student athlete it was really special. Now, you're a first-generation Mexican-American student and the first NCAA athlete in your family. What is that? What has that meant to your family, and, and how much pride does that bring you to accomplish all of this and to represent your family like that? Yeah, so my dad actually lives in Mexico now, and um, through my childhood, I haven't been through the best things, but I think that through my adversity, I've really fought to um, continue my education, continue my gymnastics, and... Um, to be able to even be here is a blessing, and my family is incredibly proud of me. I think with the adversity that I've faced, a lot of people would have given up, and for me to continue to push and continue to fight for people like me is really special. Yeah, it's very powerful, and you mentioned it before. We are studying nutritional sciences, uh, a passion of yours, health and nutrition, um, but what has that been like for you? Because that's not an easy major to do for anybody, let alone a Division One full-time gymnast, but what has that experience been like on the student side of your gymnastics experience? Yeah, so, I mean, my education is important to me, and I think that it is difficult to balance. It is difficult to 
wake up at 7 a.m. every day or even earlier if we have weights and then go to class and go to practice after go to tutoring or study hall and then go home and do homework and then repeat it all over again. I mean, that's difficult for anybody. And these science classes that we have to take as my major requires, it's difficult. It's a hard balance, but I've made it work. And being a gymnast, I think growing up with being in a skin tight leotard, nutrition is something that's always kind of in the forefront of what we do and to be able to study it and study, um, you know, body image, stuff like that is super important to me. Like I said, women empowerment, and this is something I think that fits really well for me. And you've gotten so much of a head start on things you're passionate about after gymnastics, but with a degree in nutritional sciences and when you're done competing, what's, what's the plan for Serena? I really want to work abroad. I think that I've made that very clear. I've went internationally and, I think that my ultimate goal is to be a nutritionist for a professional league. So I think that's something that I'm really um, passionate about doing, a spe specifically a women's program. Um, but, I mean, I'm willing and open for anything. And if I have other opportunities that come my way, maybe I'll continue my education here in Arizona for a little bit longer. Absolutely. And we'd love to have you here for as long as you want, as many degrees you want to go for. Uh, you're a tremendous student athlete and a great representative of our university. And moving forward, later this week, official start of gymnastics season, uh, I want to pick your brain a little bit as a returner on uh, what to expect, what we're looking forward to, and I'll start specifically with you. What are you most looking forward to this season of gymnastics? I'm looking forward to just getting out there. I mean, we were expecting full fans. We were expecting COVID to kind of be a thing of the past, but unfortunately, that hasn't been a reality. Um, I'm looking forward to just being able to compete. I mean, with it being so uncertain these past two years, I really want to have that full length season, you know, experience. So I'm really excited to just be able to showcase our new team and showcase our new faces and really just show what we have in store this year for everybody. And do you have any specific insight or maybe scan report you can give us on some of your fellow gymnasts? Uh, Lilia Hargrove was obviously a standout last yeah. last year. Any, anything uh, we can be surprised by coming up? Well, we have a lot of new floor routines. I mean, Malia is a star, and she definitely anchors us every single meet on floor, so that's definitely somebody to look out for. Jessica is amazing on vault, and we have a lot of freshmen who are stepping in on bars for us. So I think that with that and our entire beam team, I mean, we, we have so much depth. We have, I think, double digits, which is really good for a collegiate gymnastics team. Um, so we can really put anybody in at any time. And I think that's really special because it's not just who can do it for us. It's who can do it the best and score us the highest that we can. So, I mean, and that's really special to have. And as the non-gymnast in the room, I can tell you if folks didn't know Malia was talented from watching her compete, <laughs> her first pitch at Arizona baseball at high Corbett is something else. It's on YouTube. If you're not, if you're, if you haven't seen it already, look it up. It's uh, one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Uh, but that's for the season preview coming up this week. Arizona Gymnastics starts off. Serena, thanks for joining us. No problem. Thank and you. And we'll really. see you on the next episode of the Bear Down Podcast. Thanks again to Serena Linton from Arizona Gymnastics for today's episode.